In 1886, Dr. Martha George Ripley founded the first maternity hospital of Minneapolis, Minnesota. At the time, women and their babies were not being given sufficient care, and unwed mothers were being turned away at hospitals. When maternity hospital was established, they combated these tragedies by caring for mothers and infants, many of which were previously denied medical care. They were also at the forefront of advanced maternal care techniques that aimed to make the experience more comfortable and personal. The maternity hospital was a triumph for women's rights and infant care, as it sparked change both in the delivery methods of babies and the treatment of unwed motherhood in society. During the 1800s, men and women had very different places in society. While men were seen as providers for their families, the belief that a woman's place was in the home was constantly enforced through the things they read, the programs they watched, and even the clothes they wore. Very few women had jobs and even less worked in the medical field. However, with the rise of the women's rights movement, more and more opportunities became available. Even with these changes, men and women were still separated in many ways, one being by means of sex and marriage. While it was socially acceptable for men to have multiple sexual partners, sex out of wedlock for women was viewed as a sin. Therefore, when unmarried women became pregnant, they were largely shunned by society. The majority of hospitals turned away unwed, widowed, poor, and abandoned mothers seeking care for this reason. Because of this, these women were forced to deliver at home with improper equipment and a lack of medical knowledge. While women throughout years have had their babies at home, we no longer recommend that. The risks of delivering at home are much greater. The risk of dying from unattended blood loss, from uh, infection, from blood clots, from undiagnosed heart disease are not uh, uncommon or that rare. And so currently we do recommend that all women have a delivery in a medical setting. This was not the only problem surrounding infant delivery and maternal care in the late 19th century. Hospitals were strict and treated their patients with a sterile, unfeeling touch. Relaxed, happy patients were not the priority when it came to delivering babies. According to the Economic History Association, the global infant mortality rate was notably high at 214 per 1,000 babies dead after birth. Child labor was a huge problem caused a lot of deaths, a lot of illnesses, a lot of injuries. Women were dying. You saw the maternal mortality rates were really quite high. And when a family loses their mom, it, it really struggles. The first steps to combat these issues were taken when Martha George Ripley moved to Minneapolis in 1883. Prior to this, she trained to become a doctor at the Boston School of Medicine. She was also a feminist believing strongly in women's rights. These traits, as well as the need for better care for mothers and their infants, drove Dr. Ripley to found the first maternity hospital in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Her goal was to reform the medical practices being used and to provide mothers of special cases with a safe place to deliver their babies. The maternity hospital was opened November 30, 1886 with money and support from the community fund. Advertisements in Minneapolis newspapers and hospital pamphlets encouraged people to donate. Almost half of the hospital's income was contributed by the community fund each year, while the other half came from patients with the ability to pay for the hospital's services. Organized by Dr. Ripley, the hospital started out small, at a house on 15th Street with three patients, a nurse, and Dr. Ripley herself. While the hospital was well received by many, especially women, its founding was not without controversy. The general public did not support the work of the hospital because they believed that it encouraged sex out of wedlock. Some mothers avoided maternity hospital simply because of their work with single mothers, even though they provided exceptional services. The hospital gave care to poor, unmarried, widowed, and deserted mothers. They did not discriminate based on class, nationality, or social status. No one was turned away because of an inability to pay for the hospital's services. Maternity Hospital also cared for infants, some of special cases born at the hospital, and found homes for orphans. In its first year, Maternity Hospital cared for 37 women and girls and 32 babies. By 1921, years later, the number of people they serviced was more than 20 times that amount. As Maternity Hospital grew and became more advanced, they maintained the same core value of caring for infants and their families 
with kindness and compassion. Their main priority was to make their patients comfortable and relaxed. Women could take classes to prepare them for birth and keep them calm. The hospital also offered rooming in, which gave a family a private room to bond with their newborn. All of this separated them from other hospitals that practiced more rigid, impersonal methods of delivering infants, and their results proved that this was a move in the right direction. The infant mortality rate of the hospital was only 25% of the national average. They also set a record of 6,845 consecutive cases without any maternal deaths. Through its acceptance of people and its advancements in infant care and delivery, Maternity Hospital was truly revolutionary. While both Dr. Ripley and her hospital no longer exist, their impact can still be seen today. One of the first impacts was on infant delivery methods. Techniques such as rooming in, parenting and childbirth classes, and using more natural methods such as breathing exercises and relaxation to reduce the amount of anesthesia needed spread to other hospitals after being practiced in maternity hospital. Today, these things are common practice. Currently, the American infant mortality rate is 4.3 deaths per 1,000, a significant decrease from the 19th and 20th century. The hospital also had a big impact on women's rights. Maternity hospital gave poor and unwed mothers a safe place to have their babies where there previously was none. In 1947, the hospital took care of nearly 60 illegitimate births meaning babies born to single mothers per month. Maternity hospital was not just for delivery, but was a haven that cared for mothers and babies even after they delivered. The hospital provided single mothers with job training and helped them find work. They also found homes for orphaned or abandoned babies who had been delivered at or brought to the hospital. Their efforts to help prevent unplanned pregnancies and encourage women's sexual health has continued all the way to present day. Perhaps the most significant impact of Martha Ripley's life is the Ripley Memorial Foundation made in her honor with funds left from the hospital. According to the foundation, the Ripley Memorial Foundation awards grants to direct service programs in Ramsey and Hennepin County which focus on teen pregnancy prevention. Just this year, they awarded $73,150 in grants to groups working to prevent teen pregnancies and promote sexual health. Since the 1990s, the teen pregnancy rate in the United States has been steadily declining to its current lowest rate. This is really a critical thing. Dr. Ripley's influence has reached far past her lifetime and will continue to impact women and medicine for many years to come, as will Maternity Hospital. Dr. Martha Ripley and Maternity Hospital made their mark on Minnesota through their practice of new infant care and birthing techniques, and by giving care to poor, abandoned, widowed, and unwed mothers, who were often ignored by society and who needed the care most. Dr. Ripley also made an impact through the Ripley Memorial Foundation made in her honor, which works to help and educate women of all classes on sexual health. In these ways and more, Dr. Martha Ripley and Maternity Hospital impacted hospitals today and turned the tragedies for women in the 19th century into triumphs for women today.